the Color Wheel Lion, featuring the elements of art of line, color, and texture. For today's project, you need watercolor paints, a small cup of water, a pencil, a Sharpie, ruler, and two circles, one large, one small, and some paper towels. We're going to be starting with a 9 by 12 piece of watercolor or mixed media paper and a couple of tracing circles. They're about 8 inch and 3 inches wide. Um, this one here is my larger 8 inch. I'm going to trace around it with a um, Sharpie. Make sure it's up in the top left hand corner as far as you can get it. And then I'm going to take the smaller of the two circles. I'm going to place that in the center of the larger circle and making a tracing of this piece. Hold it down with one hand, go around carefully. When you're done tracing it, then you can remove it and it'll look a little bit like a donut. Then you know you have it right. This circle shape is going to be our main or our color wheel, which we need to create six separate sections. I'm going to take a straight edge ruler and draw a straight line down from the top of the circle, but I'm going to stop when I hit the smaller circle. That's the face of the line, so I don't want to draw on it. Next, I want to create an X shape. So I'm going to, um, oops, I'm going to straighten out, straighten out my ruler so I have a diagonal. We don't want to go straight across. We want to make a diagonal line across the middle stop when you get to the smaller circle, jump over, and then continue the line. I'm going to make the other side of the X, stop, jump over the circle, and up to the other side. You should have six parts to your color wheel. Now we're going to draw a face on our line. I'm going to start with a rectangle in the middle of the circle and an upside down triangle this is going to be his nose. So a rectangle and then an upside down triangle. I'm going to draw a very large oval shape coming out from the top part of the triangle. See the oval? Great. Now you're going to add a little loop at the bottom of the triangle. This is going to be his little mouth one on each side, you need two. That same curved shape we're going to use for his eyes. I guess it looks like the letter U. I'm going to add a few little dots on his face. And then I'm going to make that same U shape, but this time upside down, for two ears. repeating the same shape. Next we're going to add a body. He is going to be a sleeping lion. So I'm going to trace with my fingers almost to the other edge of the paper. I'm going to start from the head and I'm going to go all the way across in a long sweeping curve. If you're not sure you can practice it with your finger a few times to get the motion down. Now I'm going to add a leg so it's a straight line across the bottom of the paper and then curve it up. I'm going to make another curved line for the top part of his leg. For his front legs, we're going to make a wide W shape. And there's his front legs. And then to connect the front legs to the back leg, one more U shape for his belly. I'm going to add some little toes here for him and some here too. You could add claws or just little toes. So I don't want to forget his tail. We're going to make a sweeping tail off the back. And now our drawing of our lion is pretty much finished. I'd like to add some texture to this lion so he looks furry. I'm going to use a small little stroke with my marker so that I can start to build some fur on his body. This will look textural like it's fluffy. So to speed this up while I do this, I'm going to speed the film and then when we get towards the end I'll come back in.
Okay, so I finished his body with some texture, some fur. I'm going to add a little bit around the edge of his face. Just use a very short little line. It'll give him the indication that he has um, some fur there. I'm going to color in the tip of his nose black. Most lions have um, either pinks or black noses. So I'm going to add a little black on his nose. And now we're going to start our color wheel. Part two, the color wheel. The lion's mane is going to be our color wheel. We have six sections and we need to mark where our three primary colors are going to go. So our primary colors can't touch each other on the color wheel. They need to be separated by a white spot. So I'm writing in red, yellow, and blue and leaving three empty spots next to them. I write them in pencil so I don't forget. I'm going to take my brush because I'm going to paint these in with some watercolor and I need to wake up the paint. So generally I count to about 10 as I'm very lightly swirling a damp paintbrush over my watercolor. So after you've counted to 10, you're going to use the tip of the brush and you're very carefully and very gently going to paint over. If it starts to look cracked or you can see white through it, it means you don't have enough paint on or enough water on your brush for your watercolor. I'm going to outline the square first and sometimes the little bristles fall off and you can just pick those off. And I'm going to use a very, you don't want to squish it, so I'm, don't do that. I'm going to um, use a very light touch and allow the water to do some of the work for me. And I try to keep it going in the same direction when I'm using my watercolor. I'm going to outline the square. Oh, it's actually like a pizza, pizza wedge. I may have to reload my brush again and add a little more pigment on it, a little more paint and I'm going to make sure I don't leave any white spots. Always use the tip of your brush. See how it's shiny? That means it's still wet. So I'm rinsing my brush off. I'm going to use a little piece of paper towel to blot the extra water off so that I don't mix the colors too much. And now I'm going to start with my yellow. I'm going to add a little water to my brush got to wake the paint up using the tip of the brush I'm going to swirl it about 10 seconds and make sure I have enough pigment on the brush I'm going to outline the lion's head first and then the edges of this um, section I still think it looks like a little piece of pizza here and I'm going to outline that I may need to reload with a little bit of water and a little more watercolor I'm going to use a very gentle stroke, reload, and fill in the rest of the section. I hold my paintbrush like I would a pencil or a marker when I'm working, and I allow the watercolor to do the work for me. I don't need to scrub it. If you're scrubbing, you might need a little more uh, water. So dip, tap, and then swirl. I'm going to clean the brush off again by blotting it on the paper towel, and then go to my next color swirly 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 and we're going to outline the blue and then fill in the section with our blue paint Now it's time to create our secondary color. So if I were to mix yellow and blue together, what color would go here? Yellow and blue make green. So I'm going to put a small G there. I'm going to wet my brush, pick up my green pigment off my watercolor, make sure you wake it up because it's been sleeping, outline, and then fill in the section. 
And again, with watercolor, sometimes you have to reload a little bit of water and a little more pigment. If it looks really pale or really thin, you need more watercolor. The next color is the one between the red and the yellow, which is what? Orange, right. So we're gonna wake up the orange paint and we're gonna paint in an orange section right here around the ear and right around the outside of our little color wheel here. And I'm gonna carefully fill this one in. There we go. And then I'm gonna rinse my brush one more time and I have to do my last uh, wheel here, which is going to be the combination of red and blue, which make what color? Purple, right. Rinse your brush off. And I need to find my purple. These are in order, so it's right after the blue. If you're not sure, you can test it and just tap it on the paper towel and you can see the color. So that is my purple or violet. Sometimes it's called violet. We are going to outline the head, here we go, and outline the section, and then I'm going to carefully fill it in. And there we go, we're all finished. What I was uh, showing you here is that, see where it's shiny? That means it's still wet. We don't want to lift it while it's wet because it will drip. Watercolor is very thin and it does run. So let it stay flat until it's not shiny anymore. If you see any shiny spots, it's wet. This looks great. I hope you enjoyed this project and you don't forget to sign your art. Sign your art, bottom right hand corner. Hope you enjoyed the project. See y'all later.